The Austrian State Treaty of 1955 was a great example of peaceful coexistence between the two superpowers. At the end of the Second World War, Austria was divided in a similar zone to Germany. It had four zones, each occupied by USSR, USA, Britain and France. Now, because Austria was part of the Anschluss, it was seen as a power, along with Germany, that was responsible for the Second World War. And the Allies, as part of the Marshall Plan, should I say the US as part of the Marshall Plan, had already put about a billion's worth of aid into it, and only the Soviet zone, and the Soviet zone only received about 20% of that aid, which shows how, you know, uh, unbalanced the, distribu- the distribution of aid was. Uh, Austria could have actually become a big issue along, as long as the division is East and West Germany. However, the Austrian in the Western zones um, were quite keen to say that Austria could have um, been absorbed into the Soviet sphere of influence in the way that Czechoslovakia was as well, or Czechoslovakia eventually was uh, following the murder of Benes. Um, Austria is also referred to occasionally as Europe's Korea. However, due to the um, peaceful coexistence between powers, Khrushchev and Eisenhower began to talk more and negotiate. The USSR was showing serious intentions of embarking on negotiations over the future of Austria. And in May 1955, they reached an agreement in the form of the Austrian State Treaty. It led to a withdrawal of all occupying powers and the declaration that Austria would be a neutral state. And this was quite important because it meant that Austria would actually you know, be a free country in its own right, but couldn't join sides. And this showed the cooperation between the Cold War powers and it moved to a future sticking point, which was obviously Austria and the division of Austria. And this later led on to summit diplomacy, as seen in Geneva and also Paris.